Exactly one year ago, I left Russia. I didn't go on vacation. I didn't go on a business trip. I left for good, burning the bridge behind me. I divided my life on before and after. I, some say I fled, some say I escaped. I say I ran away. And I think that all three definitions are right somewhat. The last thing I want to do is, the last thing I wanted to do was to run away. I liked living in Russia. I was born and raised there. I am Russian, raised on Russian language and culture. But the day came and I was forced to run. It's really hard to believe, but it's been 365 days since I left. 365 streams and videos, 365 breakfasts, 3,650 people, and 36,500 opportunities to make this place a better world. Now I'd like to share my story on this past year with you. Howdy, howdy, everyone. My name is Konstantin, and welcome to Inside Russia, where usual Russia is explained by the usual Russian, by the unusual Russian. You ask me, well, why do you explain Russia? You're not in Russia anymore. Well, that's right. I'm not in Russia and I'm Uzbekistan, but guess what? Russia is inside me. What you will not find here is propaganda, BS, or lies. What you will find is truth, common sense, and logic. And emotions too, because I'm a human being. You know, I'll uh, share my personal story of what has happened to me during this past 365 days. One year. Is it much or little? It depends. Some years I lived was so short uneventful and routine that I even barely remember them. Some, on the contrary, were bright and colorful. But not, not one single year, none of them can compare to this past year. Uh, <laughs> in September of 2023, it feels like in the last 12 months I lived a separate life and me is not me but a different man I made a decision not to live in Russia on February 24th 2022 hours after the first Russian rockets flew to Ukraine actually I made that decision together with my wife and it was actually an easy decision to make we just didn't want to be a part of that crazy mad circus any longer you know i didn't leave russia to escape mobilization that was announced on september 21st but the mobilization was definitely a kick in the butt the decision to run away was made on september 25th on the same year that everything started last year at 104 p.m and it's easy to say the exact time. It was when I received the email from a very dear subscriber and supporter, Rafaela Fromm, a German lady. And that's what the email, the message said. Let me quote it. Hi, Konstantin and Natasha. It's Rafaela from Germany. Many people are praying for you. What a blessing. I just became that thought to write you that believers for the time and the decision you have in front of you. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean on not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Love, Rafaela. You know, I had been searching for the answer for days, 
and many people, including my friends, the moderators. Inside Russia, Mod HQ, Lorna, and Mammy K, and hundreds of usual suspects, you and the viewers advised me to leave. Strongly advised me to leave. But it's not easy to make that decision, you know, like that. Let me tell you. And finally, the answer found me on that moment when I read that message. As soon as I read Rafaela's email, the decision was made. That was the answer from above. I showed that message to Natasha. We looked at each other. We both were speechless. And I immediately started searching for an airplane ticket. I went silent on YouTube for a few days out of fear of being monitored by a certain organization. And I was fearing that if they had learned that I was going to leave, they would interfere. All the leaves are brown and the sky is gray. Remember? Uh, I remember well. You know, I've said enough already of how I was leaving and getting to Tashkent. I even made a video. I'll place a link right here. And if you haven't watched it, you know, go ahead and check it out. I don't want to repeat myself here. I just want to say that when you make such decision to leave your life behind in a hurry in a matter of hours, there's a new feeling inside. <laughs> this new feeling is born. It's a mix of fear, despair, and hopelessness. And it's generally, you know, generously a lot sprinkled by adrenaline. And it's not a good feeling. So one year ago, I successfully escaped. I landed in Tashkent. The adrenaline wore off in about two days. But that feeling of fear, despair, and hopelessness, I call it the hellish cocktail, it stayed and started growing inside and transforming into something pretty darn ugly. A very complicated emotion. I can't explain it, you know, it's just dark inside. You feel darkness and cold. It squeezes you and it doesn't let you breathe. Uh, you know, I'll ask you to do this. Close your eyes and imagine that you must leave your home and your country in 36 hours. Forever. You must leave everything behind. Your home, your assets, your belongings, your job, your career that you have worked so hard building. All you can take with you is one suitcase and a backpack. You know, leave everything behind. Did you imagine doing it? That's a scary thought. And for me, that was a reality. Like, like a phantasmagorical horror movie, you know. It was beyond hard. It was devastating. I felt like my life was over. All I had worked for was gone. And not just material things. They're actually quite, that's the easiest part. They can be acquired again. You know, somehow, the worst thing was old plans and dreams from that previous life, you know. I felt nullified. I felt completely empty inside. I felt like my country chewed me up and spat me out. I felt canceled and betrayed. Uh, you know, the last thing I want to do here is complain. Because, believe it or not... That incredibly painful and scary time turned into the best year I've ever had. At first days, I felt betrayed and alone. Betrayed? Obviously, my homeland betrayed me. My government betrayed me. My fellow Russians betrayed me by turning into something I couldn't associate myself with. I didn't want to associate myself with that any longer. But very soon, I started feeling support. From my family. It's like a little trickle, you know, like darkness inside. And all of a sudden you have something, you know, trickling down, something good. And 
Once you see the Hmong darkness, you hang on to that, and that becomes the only thing you have, really. And it becomes so valuable and powerful. And then there came support from my friends, who have backed my decisions all the way. And um, the support came from you, inside Russia, online community. You know, on the very first day that I landed in Tashkent, I had a stream, live stream. And some 26,000 people showed up. I had never had so many prayers and support and good wishes sent to me at once. It was incredibly heartwarming and inspirational. It almost made me cry, actually. It was like putting balming medicine on my bleeding heart, you know. I purchased the airplane tickets for $5,200, and the amount of financial support I received in that stream covered the tickets, and I had some left. I even had money, you know, quite a bit of money left, and I pledged that remaining amount uh, above my tickets to use to help other Russians to get out of the country if they didn't have financial means. And I'm pretty proud to say that I used that for the very purpose. So you have helped me and some other Russian folks get out of Russia. Thank you so very much. The online Inside Russia community has been a great, great emotional support. Beaten and crushed, I streamed every single evening, and I felt like I was receiving more back than I was giving you out. But, you know, bit by bit, you were giving me hope for the good, uh, hope for the world to come back, for my life to come back, you know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The usual suspects... Um, you saved my life, and I really mean it. I also did something I had never done before. I started creating an offline community, a support group. I figured that I had great support from you. I received great support from family and friends. And at the same time, in Tashkent, there were so many other exiles living in the same situation as I was, you know, in the same condition, with the same emotions. It was really easy to spot. I mean, all you had to do is take a walk on the street and you would run into hundreds, hundreds of Russians. They dressed differently. They were, uh, they, they were so different looking from the locals because locals are tanned by the end of summer. And um, people from Russia, not enough sun, uh, you know, fair skin. Um, you, you, you could, you could look in their eyes and you could see, I guess the same thing I was having in my eyes, you know, this hellish cocktail of hopelessness, despair, pain. I was, anyway, I saw hundreds and hundreds because what I did, I walked back and forth, you know, pretty much days, all day long for a few days, just listening to the music, not trying to think of anything, you know. And I just saw people, hundreds and hundreds of people around me. So I started inviting people to join me for breakfast. And to trick them to join me at first, I started offering to feed them, to buy them free breakfasts. Every night, I was fortunate to receive financial support from the viewers. And the following morning, some of that money went to buy people free breakfasts. You know, I'm not sure if there's a such a uh, such a thing as a free lunch, but there's definitely free breakfast for everyone who asks in Tashkent these days. And you know what? Our group started growing. I called it Tashkent International Breakfast Club, and the idea was, you know, uh, for the Russians in Tashkent to get together and, you know, they started getting together and this word started spreading like a wildfire and for a good reason. It worked. People supporting one another in such difficult time worked 
it was what was needed, okay? Um, I was receiving inspiration from you at night, and I was giving it out to the others following morning. And, at, you know, at first I invited the Russians who were in exile in Tashkent. Um, but around December or so, I had an insight and I started to invite the Ukrainians. So both Russians and Ukrainians would sit at one table, looked at each other and look at each other's eyes and break bread and drink together. And we would try to make amends somehow. I had never heard of anyone doing that before, but I figured that it must be done and someone would have to start to make the first step, you know. So I figured, why not us? And the Ukrainians came, bit by bit, you know. And every time uh, they showed up and they shook my hand, uh, I received my tiny portion of personal salvation. And every time I shake hand of a Ukrainian person, I, I, I still get that, a tiny portion of personal salvation. First six months were incredibly difficult of living here in Tashkent in exile. Do you know what culture shock is? It's a nasty thing. It's a nasty thing in regular life, under regular circumstances for everyone. But for us, it was like on steroids. Now, culture shock is something that when you move to a different place, you are taken to a completely different environment. And I guess your mind starts rebelling against it. Okay. It takes a while to get, to get used to the new ways and uh, your mind screams, oh, I want to go back, you know. And then you feel terrible. Just so you understand, you feel like you sit on a long winter evening alone in an apartment in a foreign land with no family around there somewhere far away in Russia. And you feel so bad, you want to howl like a dog. It was so bad. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess it's difficult to explain. You just have to, you know, I hope that no, none of you lives through that. But trust me, it was bad. I got help from my family and you, the online community of Inside Russia, and the people in the breakfast club. And you know what? Little by little, culture shock disappeared. It started disappearing. My initial stage of horror and hellish cocktail of emotions started easing up a little bit. The sun started shining, so to speak. And um, I became surrounded by new people, good people. I made friends. People I didn't know started seeking my acquaintance and my help. And all of a sudden, I felt that What I considered the end of life and the curse turned out to be a blessing. I clearly remember um, my wife and son were visiting me and I woke up and I saw them. And all of a sudden, something started shining inside of me. You know, many, closed, many doors closed behind me. And much was lost in the past. Much was lost of the past. But my God, so many new doors opened and so many opportunities started appearing out of the blue that I, I never expected. I didn't even know they existed. Life ceased to being black. It became, you know, started becoming light and colorful again. You know, of course, we, I, myself, and us, you know, the exiles, we have faced many challenges. Like, um, we are very limited in our travels. The European countries do not take us. There are many, limit many limitations on where we can do business, where we can open companies, and 
bank accounts. You know, when they learn that we're Russian and holders of Russian passports, they don't, some of them, they don't even want to talk to us. Russian passport holders aren't taken well almost anywhere. And that is a true problem for many people, myself included. But you know what? I don't care. These difficulties are so insignificant compared to what I have here in Uzbekistan. My family joined me permanently. I wake up every single morning and I see them. And that makes me happy because guess what? For almost one year, I woke up and I didn't see anyone right next to me. I was alone for almost one year. And that's not good. But now they're with me. And that alone makes me want to fly. I have created a community over 1,000 people of Russians, Ukrainians, Uzbeks, Israelis, Americans. We change our world for the better every single week. Inside Russia is growing and my messages and stories are needed more than ever. How do I know? More people watch them, more people subscribe, more people like them and, you know, more people share them. I lost my previous executive job, that's true, but guess what? I gathered an entire new career. No, not really a career, a direction to move in life. And I love it. I love what I'm doing right now so much more than what I was doing before. I'm able to support my family with what I'm doing and provide support to others. And that is share with the others. And that's such a fulfilling, yeah, fulfilling thing. I'm participating in incredible projects in creating projects myself to help others. Other people come to me and they ask me for help. And you know what? I can help them. And some, some of the viewers, you know who you are. You're actually helping me with that. Again, I found you through this online community. So this is a miracle. My life is so much more fulfilling now. And, um, you know, when I look back onto this 365 days, it feels like I landed in Tashkent just yesterday. I can't believe how fast this year has gone by. And you know, it's it's filled with miracles. It's filled with miracles now. The most important thing though, I think besides besides what what has happened here in Tashkent, the most important thing is I've made my choice and I have informed the entire world of my choice. I have divorced Russia. No, not Russia that I was born and grew up in, but Russia that has become. And I have chosen the side of the light. And unlike tens of millions of Russians, I'm not afraid to say that. I have become an activist, spreading messages and thoughts. And I hope that what I saw will grow. 365 days ago, I felt crushed. I could hardly move and breathe. Like I said, the only thing I could do is to put headphones in my ears and walk and listen to the music and try to push the dark thoughts away from my head. (laughs) Didn't really do a good job on that, you know, but um, I was in physical pain inside, darkness, hopelessness, and depression, not knowing what to do next, thinking my life's over. Now, I don't have those emotions. I simply don't have time for them. I keep moving forward, and so far, so good. What a difference one year can make, you know. Thank you, friends. You, you who are watching right now, 
who watch me every day, who comment, who ask questions, who send in prayers and supporting financially, thank you. And thank you, the Almighty. Thank you for the year that started with <laughs> the feeling that life was over, but it turned out to be the best year I've ever had. Thank you. And uh, I'm just getting started. And that's basically in a nutshell of what, what my year has been. Um, I've tried to describe my emotions and um, feelings. You know, I'm ready to answer your questions if you have any. Thank you so much. If, you, if you'd like to um, help me a little bit, please spread this message by making reposts in your social media accounts. I'd really appreciate that. Um, that's it. Let me turn on the live stream chat. And um, it's on. Thank you so much, the mods. By the way, if you're here for the first time, please know that uh, this channel has the best moderator team in the world. Lorna and Mommy K, um, two ladies who have been with me since not just I moved to Tashkent, but since way before the war. And, you know, they've been with me in every single stream. So I would like you to applaud them, please. And Harry Potman and Bob S. and um, Prince Amir Fazad, thank you so much for coming back every day and watching my head. Watching, watching my back. I'm sorry, not my head. <laughs> if you want me to notice your messages, please put them in caps. So it's much easier for me to see. And please... Put inside Russia after that sign, so um, your questions or messages are highlighted in orange. Much easier to see. Hang on one second. One just. I'll open the chat in a new window, like I usually do. Again, mods, thank you for coming. This is such a day, very important day for me, and uh, the usual suspects, thank you so much. And again, uh, you know, literally, you saved my life. Thank you. Andrew Baker, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate it. Uh, John and Nikki from Lake Shasta, amazing that it's been a year. Thank you, Mods, for helping Constantine. I agree. Thank you so much, John and Nikki. And again, thanks to the Mods. Rabbit Bill, thank you so much. Thank you for your support with no message, but this message is strong enough. Baker Stalk, again, I'm going to be reading uh, the comments and questions in caps and highlighted in orange. Roger Williams, howdy. Pentium 100 megahertz, howdy. Adam. <laughs> this one gave me a bit teared up at the beginning. Uh, thank you, Adam. Thank you. It was it was very strange year. Lise Dumbrell, felt gut wrench you were feeling. I hope we know we're praying, wishing you better. Um, I know very much. Not only I know, I felt the prayers and they helped me physically. So. Thank you. Thank you, Liz, for coming back all the time and uh, praying and helping and supporting. Thank you. Bob 
Bob, Howdy, Ferrari Guy, Robert Whip, Cookie Bombay, <laughs> hello, long time no see, happy anniversary, you know, a few months ago, I'd say around February, if you, if I read that, Colleen, um, happy anniversary, I'd, uh, I don't know, let's say, what are you talking about? But now, thank you so much. It really is a happy anniversary for me. Because everything has worked out at the end. And I have a feeling I'm just I'm just getting started, you know. Charlie B. from Pacific Beach, California. Howdy. Uh, Sam K., thank you for the good words now. And as always, thank you. Pinda the peanut, thank you very much. Thank you for coming every day and, you know, uh, watching and listening what I mumble. Great Southern Land. EW 1974. Uh, thank you again, Liz, for love and prayers received and felt. Thank you. Just Terry, thank you, friend. Thank you so much, Angela. Mark no, hey, hello. Technically, we are watching your head and not your back. <laughs> That's funny. Artistic wolf. <laughs> uh, okay. Excellent. Thanks, Mods, for watching my head. Um. <laughs> uh, Mountain Den, thank you so much. Uh, my neighbor, you haven't let us down once. Keep up the good job. Well, um, you know, I can't. I can't because I, 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 if I let you down, I would let myself down. And um, there's a fire burning in me. I'm so angry. I'm so upset that the people who have hijacked my country are doing what they're doing. And they're not just hijacked the country. They're changing the country. They're changing Russian folks. You know, believe it or not, but there are so many decent people there, but they're changing. They're led by these gangsters, okay? And uh, there's a burning desire for me to, to do something about it. So I can't, I can't, I can't stop. Um, I got to keep on going. Thank you for coming back every day and, you know, supporting me, watching me. Andrew Baker has just become a sponsor. Thank you so much, Andrew. I appreciate it very much. Aisma, thank you so much. Very emotional. On a side note, the picture today is darker, but the color contrast is very nice. I am, uh, well, thanks for the words. Thank you very much. I appreciate your words. In the picture, well, I'm playing with that, you know. Um, this system is new for me, new camera, new new streaming device. Um, and just give me a few streams and I'll find the optimal picture. Somehow I will, you know, I like it dark, but I might light it up the background, the back of the picture a little bit. But I think it's better than iPhone. By the way, as usual, <laughs> I'm pretty conservative. I'm drinking this wonderful uh, Twinings English breakfast tea. Extra flavorful. I think that's called extra strong. Um, it's good. Good. You know, English breakfast is best enjoyed at midnight in Tashkent, Uzbekistan. It's good. Bobby, thank you so much. Happy anniversary for me and Deborah. Inside Russia was the first stream that brought this war to our attention. 
Thank you, Bobby. Uh, I remember that time. I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I was so devastated that Russia attacked Ukraine and staged, started waging the war. I was so, so shaken, so broken. I made a video and I figured I was, I was overflowing with emotions. I, I figured I needed to stream, to, to, to share. And then I started streaming the first and the second day, and some of you remember. And I started telling what was going on around me, but there was no structure. You know, I was just um, communicating, saying the news in 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 uh, you know between the comments and questions and things like that. So, uh, and then after a couple of weeks, I started shutting off the stream chat for the first 30 minutes, deliver the message and then, you know, communicating. So I remember those times. I was the only one, by the way, all Russian English speaking YouTubers, they kept their mouths shut because everyone was afraid. I understand them, you know, uh, for first two weeks, it was me, then Nikki Proshin uh, started streaming. Pretty, pretty brave guy too. In 1420, they started streaming, so. Um, thank you, Bobby, again. Thank you. Amir, Constantine, absolutely me. <laughs> right move, getting wild, getting was good. Remember that week quite well. Was so worried for your safety. This is a new chapter, a new book of life. Amir, thank you so much for being here, and it has turned out to be quite the chapter, you know, and I'm actually very fortunate and very happy that I can share this chapter with you, and not just the one big chapter, but every single page, every single line of this chapter, because I've been broadcasting for the past 365 days, you know, that's amazing. Dirk, happy birthday, Roger Williams, uh, thank you, Dirk. For letting me know and we'll sing right now uh kg1 i'm glad to have helped support you and your family very small way with some probably dumb questions well first of all uh, i love your questions and i love your comments and they were not dumb they're fantastic and uh, they're thought-provoking and uh you know your help is very appreciated it's noted you know, it's welcomed and it's much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. White Lightning, triple seven. One of my Polish relatives has said that the country lived through the trial by Kafka together with Eastern Europe, inflicted by USSR, alienation. Interesting. Thank you. It's not a question. I'll think about it. Thank you so much. Teresa McCartney is a new sponsor. Welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you. Fantastic to see you at the Inside Russia. And Wolfhound 26X. Thank you. A little something for your honesty. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate very much. Oops. I got to put inside Russia right here. So it says instead of road. I think I missed a couple super chats. I would like to warn everyone that I'm going to sing a little bit, a happy birthday song to Roger Williams. And um, please cover up your ears so I don't break them. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Roger. Happy birthday to you, Roger. I'm wishing you many happy returns of the day, good health, um, uh, Enough money for you to lead comfortable life and be surrounded by the people you love 
and who love you. Happy birthday. Julia, thank you so very much. My heart was so happy to see you on that flight. <laughs> Oi. Oh. I remember that experience. I remember. I'm very glad that I documented. I'm very glad I filmed. I'm very glad that I streamed every single day, you know. Because that memory is becoming more and more distant. Uh, when I landed in Tashkent, after a while, after two months, I said, I'm going to make a movie and I'm going to make, I'm going to write a book. Book of, is halfway done. I thought I'd finish it by the end of last year, but oh my, that's such a difficult and slow task. You know, uh, I squeeze word by word for me, but I keep on going. And hopefully one day I'll finish it. And I'm hoping by the end of this year, you know, at least that's the goal I've set. And I have all the material for a movie. Now I just need to edit. But that's, trust me, that's a lot. Uh, but I'm so glad I have documented because it's becoming more and more distant. And I was quite, quite that time and quite, you know, quite the life. Um, huge super chat from Thomas Elliott. Thank you so much for being a great part of Inside Russia. Ian, thank you for your messages and thank you for your support. Can only wish you better years to come and more English breakfast. You and Natasha have been very brave. Oi, Natasha has been even braver than me. Um, thank you so much for the support. Money is much needed much appreciated but the words are priceless you know the words that have kept me making step after step after step because it's difficult you know on some days it was extremely difficult just to get out of bed but um every time i closed my eyes i saw michael and my kids and uh, I did it for them. I did it for my wife who had trust in me. And um, I kept on going. Thank you, Thomas. Mark Bramlett from Jacksonville, Florida. Howdy, friend. <laughs> Leslie Fleming. Yeah, those days when I was in Russia, oh my gosh. I became the master uh, speaker between the lines, you know. Seems like it was yesterday. That, <laughs> it's not a problem, it's just that condition that I was living in that didn't allow me to speak straight. As soon as I landed in Tashkent, you know, I dropped that speaking between the lines. And now I've been saying it the way it is. And you know what? It's so liberating. I'm used to it now. But I remember when I switched, I didn't have to speak between the lines anymore. I was like, wow. Yeah, I remember that. Roger Williams, I'm I'm glad you liked it. Thank you. Um, Chris Lyons, what would be your goals for the next year? What can be accomplished in another 365? Good question, because I do have goals. First of all, I'd like to keep on growing the Tashkent Breakfast Club. I want more Ukrainians and more Russians. More everyone. But, you know, I really like when Ukrainians come. One of the most rewarding things from the Breakfast Club so far has been two weeks ago. We invited, we have a family from Mariupol. And they saw it all. They lived through Russian invasion. Their house was destroyed partially. They stayed for three or four weeks, first weeks when 
there was fighting in Mariupol, bombings, shellings, plane flying, planes flying and all of that. And their story of escape is pretty dramatic, okay? I heard it for the first time when long time ago, when they just first came in February, last February. And um, we were, we were uh, I made one of the meetings on Sundays, like an open mic, so everyone would get out there and tell the story of their escape. And it was mostly Russians, two Ukrainian families, one from Kharkov and another one from Mariupol. And these folks from Mariupol, they told us the most dramatic story I've ever heard, okay? And um, some people cried. They were sitting and crying. And, you know, I keep on telling, hey, this Mariupol folks, you know, Maria and Roman, I keep telling them, I want more Russians to hear your story. Because there's no lies in it. It's like your life that you lived. I want every single Russian in the world hear your story. I've recorded it, you know, I'm going to make a movie out of it. And I'm going to place it on my channel. But then they were speaking for about an hour and they told the story of their escape again. And uh, at the end they said this. They looked at us and they said, you know, you Russian folks, we would like to thank you for you leaving Russia and not participating in what's going on in Russia right now not taking up your arms, going and fighting the Ukrainians. So thank you so much. And that was the most moving moment for me, you know, out of all breakfast club meetings, the breakfast, the Sundays, the lectures, you know. So I won't, uh, sorry, it's going to take me a while to answer this question, you know. Um, <laughs> Keith from Hawaii, thank you so much. Thank you, friend. And e EW74, thank you so much for words, prayers, and money. Thank you. T tips. <laughs> thank you. I'll give you TT ball. I'm conservative. I'm drinking two tips, two teas, but anyway. So back to the goals. So I want the breakfast club growing. I want more Ukrainians, more Russians. I want to stay safe. Uh, I hope I will stay safe in the next 365 days and we'll make another stream 365 days from now. I uh, want Inside Russia to grow. I want more and more people hear my messages. I want um, Tashkent Breakfast Club become a global phenomena, a place where the Russians meet support each other and Ukrainians meet and people make amends. I want to make it the place where good people meet. Uh, trying so far, I'm struggling. I went to Turkey. I tried. Um, I have contacts with uh, Russian community in Florida. I have contacts in California and Sacramento. I'm trying. Okay. Uh, definitely this one of the plans is to make it a global phenomena. I am a part of a peace project. Uh, it's created by uh, Meta Spencer, a professor uh, from University of Ottawa. And I'm very honored to be a part of her project. And I'm trying to help this project for the next year. Definitely, my plans are to help it as much as I can. There's um, a project in the works with one of the top U.S. universities, considering... Um, this community that we have, but that's just in the works. I'm not ready to announce it yet. There is also an idea to uh, establish a foundation for the Russians who would like to move to the United States and are able to add value to American life, you know, to speak English, to hold jobs, to have jobs, to pay taxes, and to be good uh, members of the society. Um, there are ways how to get those Russians to the United States, but sometimes it requires money that they don't have. That's not much. And I would like to establish a foundation. I just talked to uh, one of the fellow members of Inside Russia who suggested me this idea, and we had this 
I was just, you know, taken away by his proposal. So definitely want to do that. Um, and I want to establish my base in Tashkent. I want, you know, my wife, my, my, my family is here. I want to make living, <coughs> pardon me, living for them as comfortable as possible. Because they have, oh, you know, they have gone through a lot and they have trusted me in, you know, my ability to take care of them and provide for them and have a good life and safe life for them. So I'm trying to do that as much as possible. So again, Chris, thank you so much for this fantastic question. I hope I answered it. <laughs> Elsha, you sing out of tune so terribly, but it's so endearing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, thank you. I know. I know. It's uh, Trust me, it's not easy for me to sing every time because <laughs> I do it so terribly. Uh, Artistic Wolf, um, thank you. Where do you find your optimism? For example, you've said you don't believe Putin will last until 2024. I wish I could believe that. I want to believe. Uh, it's not an optimi It's not optimism. Optimism would be if I simply believed. Okay, I see clouds thickening over Vladimir Putin, and um, it's not easy question to answer. It's not a short answer okay i probably should do a stream about that but to answer as short as possible friend there are so many dynamics at work right now there are so many powerful groups uh, with own interests that they are tearing the vertical of power apart just look what is going on with Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov and his son beating an innocent guy, you know, uh, under arrest. You know, that's just kind of a sign. Looking at, you can make a bigger picture of what's going on. Things like that, and I will, I might share in the stream why I think that he's not going to last in 2025 so things like that um make up my opinion i hope i answered it kg1 thank you again watched the soyuz return to earth today and thought how great to see superpowers collaborating together for the good of all mankind how better this world could be without all the conflict Thank you so much. Not a question, but uh, an observation. I was just like that in the mid-90s when MKS, the International Space Station, Space Station, was sent to space, the ISS. I had the same feeling. I was amazed and I was happy. I thought, wow, look what we can achieve together if we work, if we don't, you know, fight each other, but if we work together. You know, Russia, America, and Europe. It was it was incredible, uh, but now it's all down the toilet. You know, and I disagree with you in one thing. Superpowers aren't collaborating here. There's one superpower. That's the United States, and uh, Russia is not a superpower anymore. It's a shade, shadow of itself. <laughs> I won't even go there. It's not a superpower. It's it's a country that's committed suicide, and it's painfully dying. Um, that's that's what it is right now. Robert. Thank you so much for good words. Uh, Tessacrat. Tesseract. Tesseract. Welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you so much. 
Um, glad you have a better purpose to your life. Ron, I indeed found a purpose, yes. And I made a video about that. Uh, it's called Inside Russia Manifesto. And that's basically... I had one of those bad days. I literally was breaking down. And I had a... I can't say a terrible stream, but a very emotional stream. And... Oof, one of those days when... That's what I was talking about when I was feeling absolutely terribly bad. And um, anyway, you, you can watch that stream. And then some things happened overnight and I woke up completely feeling completely different. And I felt like I found a purpose in life. And uh, the stream is called Manifesto. Go ahead and watch it. It's, it's worth watching, you know. Um uh, Jason Carney, thank you so much for, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. The champion of uh, supporting inside Russia. Your support is noted and discussed the <laughs> following morning with me and Natasha. Thank you. We are appreciate very much from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. And thanks for, as usual, for gifting membership to five people. That's absolutely awesome for you know, thank you from me and from 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 five people. Thank you for a super sticker from Henrik. Beer character turning around, waving his hand, saying, hey, you while lowering his glasses pair character turning um <laughs> i'm sorry i hang on let me oh gee i was reading this gift gift Give give picture, <laughs> pair character. Thank you so much. Thank you, um, Hendrik. I understand now. Thank you for your support. Fantastic to have you on on board. And uh, two minutes to midnight. Sponsor for six months. My family and I were really happy you left Russia. I remember that as if it was yesterday. Thank you. Yeah, so it's quite a day. Quite a week, actually. Jason Carney, thank you again. I, I'm seeing the super chat, and I would like to applaud to Kim Clark. Kim's been a supporter, uh, viewer, and a fellow usual suspect way before the war started. You know, when the channel was small, I remember. Um, you are coming for the New Year stream of 2022, uh, and Kim, thank you so very much. You are, you know, you. It's great to have you. You know. You hope I can return to Russia one day. I don't want to. I, I feel betrayed by both the country and its people. And I simply cannot understand how I can go back to Moscow, Rostov, and live among people who uh, are cheering the war and supporting the war and supporting the killings of Ukrainians. I don't understand them. I don't think I will ever understand them. Okay, they got to come up with... Not even... They, they don't even have to come up with an excuse because what kind of excuse can you have? No. So thank you, Kim. But um, I hope to be happy outside Russia. Jacob N., thank you so much again for um, from Australia for supporting. 
as usual, no message, but your message is heard, appreciated, and much welcomed. Thank you so much. Christina, welcome to Inside Russia. Um, great to have you. For the new sponsors and patrons, uh, there's a stream once a week on Saturday, and it's private only for sponsors and patrons, and this is where usually my family comes to the stream. Um, we discuss, we goof off sometimes, we discuss personal things. It's so fewer people come and it's so slower paced. So uh, please come back on Saturday and join our private live stream. It'll be fun. Jonathan Clark missed last uh, three straight Saturday streams. There'll be many more. Please come back this Saturday. <laughs> Victor Pizarro. Good to see you again, my friend here from Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida is a fantastic place. Um, the Central Fl Florida is one of my most favorite places there are. Um, thank you for sending good words, you know, sending my love from Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Oh, I see. Jonathan, finally day off. John, first time listener from Oklahoma. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. I hope you will keep coming back. Old silver. I've been comfort eating. I'm waiting for some gnocchi to arrive so I can make an Olive Garden knockoff. Um, when I came here a year ago, I thought that I would lose weight easily. It's no such luck. <laughs> I'm still trying, you know. Um, but I actually succeeded when I was here for one month. Uh, right after the war started, I left Russia for a month. Um, March, I spent... No, not March. April, I spent in Tashkent and I actually lost around 25 pounds and I figured hey I come here I lose well no such luck trying and struggling Julia Haney thank you so much again Jonathan Clark, I'm not sure what you mean by innocent Russians. Is there going to be a crazy Friday stream? Uh, yes, there will be, but not a stream. I want to change a little bit. I want to make videos on Friday, like to do upload and make it available at the time, usual time of the stream. But that's not going to be a stream, it's going to be a video. Uh, my checkup today was Pinda. Um, I've decided to do everything, to like do all the blood tests and uh, visit different doctors and things like that, do an MRIs. Um, so it's in the process. It's going to take probably a couple of weeks, but I want to know like, the entire picture, so to speak, the entire story. So it's going to be a few visits. Not terribly expensive here. For example, to do, I don't have health insurance, okay? I'm not a citizen of Uzbekistan. I'm not a resident. So the medicine, I pay for it out of my pocket. So uh, MRIs, uh, to do an MRI of my neck, my shoulder, my head, and the fourth part, I forgot, either lower back is... A little over $100, which is, you know, it's not cheap, but it's affordable, okay? I'm thinking if I went in Moscow, it'd be much, much more expensive. Even in the United States, oh, I don't know, probably in thousands of dollars, okay? 
things like that. So um, I want to do complete analysis of hormones and things like that. So see what's going on. Because I'm not the only one who gets sick often, who not feeling well, you know, and get headaches. I was surprised when I started sharing with people in the breakfast club and everyone was like, oh, I have that too. I, I don't feel. And then they started revealing things. And we figured we talked to doctors because we have quite a few doctors among us, okay? The doctors actually started their own uh, Telegram channel, their own chat. There are 120 doctors from Russia that we know of that let, left and came to... Like this one doctor every week comes to Tashkent and gets a job in Uzbekistan, uh, in, in Tashkent. Um, so we've, be, we've been talking to doctors and this general idea is that it's stress, huge amounts of stress. Now it's catching up with us. So, But we'll see. Kim Clark, as long as your immediate family is with you, I'll be happy for you. They are. They are not to go anywhere. They're staying. Kim, please come back this Saturday. There will be a stream, and definitely they're going to be either Olya, Dasha, Natasha, Michael, perhaps all of them, you know. Please come back. It'll be fantastic to have you. Long time no see. It's good tea. Oh. English people out there, thank you so much for twinings and tailors at Harrogate. You know, it's good, very good teas. The best teas I've ever had, I've ever tried, at least. Um, Yorkshire Gold. Unfortunately, I don't have it here. It's only in Dubai that I buy and I run out of it quickly. But Earl... Earl Earl Grey, Lady Grey, um, breakfast, English breakfast is oh, so good. And I also like Scottish tea, Brodies. It's also very, very good. White Lightning, 777, good liquid multivitamin works wonders in your life. You know, I need to know what deficiencies I have. Yes, thank you for hitting the like button, by the way. Guy L, many friends who deal with floods and earthquakes will suffer mental fatigue after a month or two of seeing despair, death, and suffering on the daily. I hear you. Be there or be square. <laughs> Dave strains um, seven days a week is very demanding. If you mean me streaming, yes. Let me tell you, seven days is very demanding. And on top of that, don't forget that I start streaming at midnight. So I finish around 1.30, which is I'm going to finish soon. And I can't sleep for an hour after that because it takes me a to unwind. An hour, hour and a half sometimes. So I go to bed around 3.00. And I have to wake up around 9, sometimes earlier, to make it to the breakfast club. So sometimes I catch an hour or so of sleep at daytime, and sometimes I don't. So that's I think that really, really affects me. Because I always slept well, and I slept at least 7, 8 hours a day. But now it's not that. It's constant undersleep. Just there is stress, cortisone, weight. Well, perhaps, you know, I think you're right. Could it be long COVID? Um, you said it had it. I had like five times. I think twice or three times was confirmed. And twice I had symptoms, but it wasn't confirmed. Long COVID? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm feeling fine now. 
out of the blue would have a headache last me for a day or two. I never had that before, by the way. Then uh, I'd start, my nose start running and I get like so throat and not feeling well in general. Once in a while, you know, and in the past didn't used to be like that. But anyway, it's not really a big deal, you know. Your symptoms are very closely associated with culture shock. Great Southern Land, thank you so much uh, for acknowledging. I think it's everything. It's just not just culture shock, but it's losing my country. It's losing everything I had, everything important to me that was before. This is like the perfect storm, I could say. Andreas Benz, um, hard to disagree with you, my friend. Natasha Panfilova is here. Howdy, howdy. We will probably meet up with Zach when he's in Seattle soon. We stay in touch. Natasha, please say hello to Zach from me. I have spoken to him. Uh, tell him I have a grudge with him because he didn't listen to me. He didn't apply to Harvard. But you know, just mention it to him, you know, that uh, he knows. He, he will know what, what, what you'll be talking about. <laughs> but uh, tell him I'm very glad that he fulfilled his dream. He moved to the USA and I think he has fantastic future ahead of him. What a bright guy. One of the... One of the few guys who did not, who was not afraid to go out there and protest and he was running away from cops, almost caught him and he left Russia and that, this, this story is amazing. I, my respect to Zach, my greatest, deepest respect. Jason Carney, thank you so much for another sponsorship. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Bobby Santi. I've never had Santi. You know, I heard that people in the south of the USA brew Santi, but hopefully one day. News girl. Uh, I love Habib Nur Magomedov. I have heard that he's a MMS fighter, MMM fighter, something like that. Uh, well, it's good for you if you like him a lot. Lee Walford, thank you so much. It's made me... Well, you know what? Thank you so much, Lee. It's not just nice to hear words like that, but it's very... It's very satisfying. If you say that it's made me a better man and you are a better judge of me than myself because you see the way I change over time from afar, okay? And then you have a more objective picture. So if you say that, then that's... Thank you. It's very, very good to hear. Very satisfying. Corvair one, thank you so much. Married to Ukrainian. When the Lord closes one door, he opens another. Agreed. I will understand your emotions. Thank you so much. My friends, thank you for coming to this very emotional and very special stream for me. It's one my one anniversary, first year anniversary, first one year anniversary of me landing in Tashkent. Again, I remember that day as if it was yesterday. 
it's an, it's absolutely incredible um what a one year what a difference one year can make in one one's life my life thank you i would like to finish the stream as usual with a prayer um please join me if you're religious and if you're not join me anyway because you can call it whatever you want not a prayer but wishing someone's good uh sending people good vibes good energy good karma anything you know uh but it's the same thing in my eyes so please join me in prayer thank you dear lord jesus christ thank you so much for giving us this life thank you for giving us this day thank you for putting food on our tables and giving roofs over our heads thank you for surrounding us with people who we love and who love us um, please give us wisdom to keep the skies above our children's head, heads peaceful and clear please give us wisdom to raise them in a way that when they grow up and become adults they will make this world a better place meanwhile for now please keep our children safe and healthy dear lord please help stop the bloodshed in ukraine reach out and touch the hearts and souls of people who are responsible and capable of stopping it do something that their eyes will get open and they will wake up from the lethargic sleep and they will they will realize what has happened and they will make the decision to stop the bloodshed please help every single ukrainian who suffered this terrible tragedy please answer their prayers and make their wishes come true and send them angels too send um please help my country russia assemble the army of your strongest angels with sharpest swords led by saint michael in shining armor and send them as your heavenly avalanche to this earth to get rid of the demons that have hijacked my country have angels run russia have make make it have angels make it peaceful loving loved respecting and respected Please send help to everyone who is traveling, send them safe travels and everyone who is seeking for asylum. Please help the hungry, the sick, the addicted, the depressed, the homeless, the jobless, the ones who are struggling with their faith, the ones who are not feeling well about themselves, the ones who are not feeling well in general. Please surround them with your love, with the warmth fill their hearts with love and their lives with your heavenly warmth and shine your heavenly light upon everyone in need please help every person in a dire situation so they feel better about themselves they feel warm they feel your love and they will get up from their knees and will stand tall and firm and they will have a better a chance for a better life for a good life um, please help all the ukrainians who are suffering from russian strikes right now god bless those who are helping ukrainians please also help single mothers out there bringing up their children and struggling trying to and make our, the ends meet please help uh, send help their way thank you for bringing us into this community and allowing us to pray um, please help everyone who's praying along with me or simply watching us pray answer the prayers and make the wishes come true dear lord i would like to ask you for a few people who need your help and i will start with a little girl her name is sarah she's in the hospital fighting for her life please help her recover um, send her your help send her strength 
Um, she is in need of help with breathing. Um, send angels to watch over her and help her. Also, please help her parents who pray for her day and night. Um, please answer their prayers and have Sarah completely recover and so she can go back home to live with her parents. And they have a happy, long life together. Answer their prayers and send them strength, please. I also would like to ask for Jason Connor, who had his, recently had his surgery, and please send him quick, quick, quick and easy recovery. Um, Jay Spike, Boss Semen, Sem from Kiev, Leslie Fleming's daughter, Janice Stevenson, uh, Anna in Poland, Scan family members. Um, please help everyone who needs help from the Scans family. Um, Summer 613, please send recovery to her mother. Julie W. Um, James Gentz. Julia Haney. Hannah, um, Susie Mailer, Vasilien Lubomirov, Gloria Roberts, Ann Larson, her family and daughter Hannah, Lise Dumbro and her family, Darla, White Lightning, George Ruberty, Pam, Wayne, who's fighting two cancers, please send help in recovery. Um, the Highwayman, David Porter, his family and daughter and everyone who's in Chernovtsi, Ukraine. Lars, Susan Marshall, John Lee McMahon, Teresa D., Terry Carter, Meta Spencer, Pamela J., Yelena, Natasha, Jake, Michael, Olya, Dasha, Sky, Bonnie, Svetlana, Angelic at Life, Randolph, Grace Philosophy, um, EMS Paramedic Liz, Karen, Lori Miles' husband, Mr. Dean Spooner and his church called Our Savior Lutheran Church, and um, Taylor Fleming. Dear Lord, also please, all the children from Ukraine who have been affected by this terrible tragedy that's happening in the country right now, um, send your angels to help them and provide the help they need. Reunite them with the families, please. Also, please help all the children who are not feeling well, send them recovery, and help their parents, give them strength. Thank you so much, dear Lord. Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, thank you so very much for coming. You're awesome. Uh, it is my pleasure and honor to have you. And again, double, double pleasure and double honor to have you on this very special day for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I appreciate your daily support, daily prayers, daily coming here and watching and listening. You're absolutely fantastic. You're awesome and you rock. There will be another message tomorrow. And as usual, I would like you to finish the stream by saying along with me the usual. Um, say it along as loud as you can. Carthago, Delenda Est. <laughs>